Art is a really great subject to tackle in Maine Home and Design because Maine has such a long history of bringing artists here. From this long history of artists coming here over the last hundred plus years, there's, it's really created a legacy where it's an artistically rich place. So every year we cover the art scene in a special art issue that has art in nearly every story that we cover. Personally, for me, it's probably my favorite subject matter that we cover in both magazines. So one of the feature stories in the issue is on Brita Holmquist, who is an artist and actually comes from a family of artists. When I paint, I don't paint from fear. I just paint really from joy. Um, being in a boat and painting are my two favorite things, aside from dogs and chocolate. When I was in Italy with my teacher, um, we were coming home one evening and in the sky there was this tiny cloud that was evaporating and uh, I said, Richard, look at that cloud, isn't that amazing? And he said, Frida, I never look at anything I can't paint. I'm not interested in it. And I realized at that moment that that cloud is what I wanted to paint ephemeral, um, just the moment that it happens and will never happen again. And to capture that is something that gives me great pleasure. From the beginning when we were thinking of the story and the feel and the direction that we want to go in, we actually uh, have in mind which photographer's style might match that profile. I usually don't have a complete idea of how it's going to look until I actually get the photography back and have read, also read the story. We worked with Trent Bell for John Bisbee. He went up and met with John in his studio and portraits really captured his personality and his work. It occurred to me about five years ago that uh, what nails want more than anything in the world is to be hammered. I've been welding them for 20 years like a fool. Um, and then last year it occurred to me that um, what do they want even more than a hammer. They want wood. <laughs> so that's red hot. And this is the first time I've screwed the nails together. So these are all just, it's like a, it's like a big floppy hinge. Everything's gotta be modular because you have to be able to move it and uh, install it, or I have to be able to move it and install it myself. So everything's got to break down. Everything breaks down, including me. <laughs> I made home and design. For more than 100 years, artists have been coming here to make art. And there's something about this place that just feeds their artistic soul. And I think that's really, um, for us, it's really fun to work on that every April when that time comes around to select the artists that are in the issue to find homes with incredible collections. Our George Smith feature um, is really fun. George was a uh, former dean of Mecca and he has an incredible um, collection in his home and really great stories behind each of the paintings. So you walk into his house and immediately he takes you around this tour of all of the artwork he has hanging. So uh, first of all, this is ja a Jack Montgomery photograph. Uh, to my view, it's, it's really a great example of what goes on here in Maine. Jack is a very well-known corporate lawyer, and yet he's also an artist and a devoted photographer. Here's something a little bit unexpected. This floor is actually a work of art. It's a painting that was done by MFA student Heather Hagel. This is a pair of uh, shoes that was made by Masaka Roberts. Most art in America today is relative art, relative to LA or relative to New York. That's how the art world kind of works. It, it learns from these centers. But what we know is that there is no more center. You know, in Maine, there's no, I want to be like a New York artist, or I want to be like an LA artist. It's, I, I want to be an artist. Uh, Maine creates a space within which people can think originally in terms of their own vision, their own aspirations, not to become what someone else wants them to become, but to become who they are. To me, it, it, it's, it's something to be really proud of. Again, not for me, but for us. And, and, and to my view, that says an awful lot about me.
Um, this piece is a minimalist piece that was done by a fellow whose name is uh, Paul Latorno. So he came to my house one day and said, Geez, I, I really want to become an artist. I said, well, you know, you've never been out of the state of Maine, but why don't you go out to California and become an artist? I did, never saw him again. <laughs> and then about five years later, the bell rang. I asked him the door. It was him. He had this painting in hand. It was just a great thing where a kid actually, you know, packed his car up with his girlfriend, drove out to San Francisco, studied art, came back with a painting in his hand and said, okay, you know, here you go.